Greetings and salutations, and welcome again to this Midday Power Surge. This is Wednesday, October 2nd, 2019. Our thematic scripture, Psalm 55 and verse 17, evening, morning, and at noon, will I pray and cry aloud, and he will hear my voice. Welcome one, welcome all to this midday power surge. I want to turn your attention to Daniel chapter 2. In the second chapter of Daniel, the Bible tells us that God gave to Nebuchadnezzar a particular dream. And in that dream, Nebuchadnezzar saw the image, head of gold, chest and arms of silver, belly and thighs of brass, legs of iron, feet of iron and clay, and the stone smites the image on its feet. And the stone represents, in a large sense, the second coming of Jesus. Nebuchadnezzar understood that Babylon would fall. His kingdom would come to an end. As a result, Nebuchadnezzar, not wanting Babylon to fall, not wanting his kingdom to come to an end, the Bible tells us Nebuchadnezzar erected an image of all gold. Image of all gold. Then he forced people to worship falsely, universally and those who refused were thrown in the fiery furnace that's the bible this brings us now to a last day application in revelation chapter 13 verse 13 through verse 17 where we see in order brothers and sisters to combat calamities the fire is in verse 13 a false day, a false system of worship will be enacted and people will be coerced, forced to worship falsely. The image of the beast. All right, friends, the image. And verse 15 through verse 17, they won't be able to buy or sell. Many will be threatened with death, the death decree. The context here is to preserve the nation. And now we're seeing in the last days, not a gold image is being erected to preserve Babylon from falling. All right, friends, to preserve nature. It is a green image. We have entered a prophetic green season. And once that Sunday law is enforced to combat climate change, the second coming of Jesus Christ will indeed take place. Just as we see in Laudato Sea, Paragraph number 237, since we have covered this in the past, I'm simply touching on these points to bring out a very important point, and then we're going to close. Now tell me, those of you in the chat room, the forum, I haven't forgotten you, tell me, based on scripture, what does green, the color green represent? What does the color green represent based on scripture? All right, green, it represents faith faith and what we're seeing this green image sunday false worship to combat climate change this green image faith is putting faith in man it's a counterfeit faith counterfeiting revelation chapter 14 and verse number 12 now we're seeing now we're hearing the pope claiming laudato si himself is the ark of safety he is the modern day noah take a look at this my friends It's clear, as you can see on the screen. Laudato see the Ark of Safety. Not only is the Pope saying that, but notice what you see on the screen, on the front page. We in the Great Ark should heed the Pope's warning on the environment. It's clear. There it is, my friends. There it is, looking to man. A false faith, counterfeit green, counterfeit faith. And of course, you could see that also on the screen. And now we're hearing people looking to Greta Thunberg as a modern day savior. Again, the counterfeit green, the counterfeit savior. And that's why the Pope also said he is the modern day Noah, the modern day Moses. 
We covered that a few days ago during midday power surge. The counterfeit green, the counterfeit faith. Wake up, my friends. It's happening all around us. There it is. Sarah Silverman says, uh, Greta Thunberg is the epitome, <laughs> the representation of Jesus, the Savior. I see Christ in Greta Thunberg. He's our Savior. She's our Savior. It's all over, my friends. And notice now, right down Matthew chapter 15. In Matthew chapter 15, the Bible tells us, Jesus says in verse 9, for in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines, what? The commandments of men. Can you see it now, friends? Putting their trust in man. Do you see it? They'll put their trust in a man-made solution, a man-made false system of worship, a man-made false day of worship, Sunday rest, Sunday worship by law. Matthew 15 and verse number 9. What are your thoughts, my friends, in the forum, in the chat room? Notice now, recently, September 30th, Church of Sweden proclaimed Greta Thunberg successor to Jesus Christ. It's clear where we are, my friends, based on Scripture. Now, what are those two documents? Now, let me just say this. Let me just say this, my friends. It's clear that a Sunday law is right upon us. Very, very clear. Do you believe a Sunday law is right upon us to combat the ills of society, climate change, morality, etc.? And do you know, once the Sunday law is enforced, that is the final test for all of us? Those of you in the forum, when the Sunday law is enforced, that's the final test for all of us. At that very moment, we make our decision. And that decision will be a final decision. At that point, we will either be sealed, saved, or seared, marked for damnation. That's why Revelation 14 verse 9 through verse 16 shows us the last test before the second coming of Jesus is that mark of the beast crisis. If any man worship, you receive the seven last plagues. That's why we need to obey the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus, the true faith, the true green cord, faith in the ability of Christ to save us amply, fully, entirely, is the faith of Jesus. That's the true green, the true green cord, the faith of Jesus. Let me tell you something, my friends. Many people are going to be sifted out once a Sunday law is enforced. Many of those even who profess to be Christians who profess to be in the SDA denomination, will be shaken and sifted out and be lost. But add this to that. Most people, some people, are being shaken and are being shaken out of truth right now. Right now as I speak. For example, biblically, look at Judas Iscariot. We know that Judas, his probation closed. Hours before Christ was crucified. Hours before Pilate gave the two options, Christ or Barabbas. Christ or Barabbas represent Sabbath or Sunday. Judas was sifted out before. Is that point clear, my friends? Now look at this here. I want to share something with you. Now look at this statement. Please note it. I won't quote it. 15 MR, manuscript releases, page 15, and also write down Testimonies for the Church, volume 5, page 80 and page 81. And also write down Great Controversy, page 608, the chapter entitled An Impending Conflict. Now, friends, look at this article here, October 1st. 2019 it says doomsday cult mom sentenced to life for murder after she banished her two quote unquote impure daughters eight and ten years of age to a parked car without food or water before they were found dead from starvation weeks later in Colorado. Her name, that's the mother on the left of your screen. 
Her name is Nashika Bramble. Nashika Bramble was sentenced to life in prison without parole on Tuesday in the deaths of Michaela Roberts, seen on the left in the right-hand photo. She's 10. And Hannah Marshall, seen next to Michaela. She's eight, she was eight years of age. It says a Colorado woman will spend the rest of her life behind bars for killing her two daughters after she and other members of a doomsday religious group banished them to a car without food or water because the girls were thought to have an impure spirit. Nashika Bramble was sentenced to life in prison without parole. She was convicted in July of two counts of first-degree murder. The sisters' bodies were found in September 2017 in a car parked on a farm near Norwood, a town of about 500 people 30 miles west of that ski resort. Heat, dehydration, and starvation killed the girls and they had been dead for several weeks before their bodies were found, authorities said. What are your thoughts, my friends, in the chat room? Bramble was a member of a religious group and moved to the property earlier that year, court documents say. Investigators say they believe the group's spiritual leader, Haiti declared that the two girls were possessed by unclean spirits during a past life and ordered them kept in a car without food or water for days as the others waited for the apocalypse before the 2017 solar eclipse. Sir has pleaded not guilty to two counts of first degree murder and two counts of child abuse. Now, Sheikha Bramble is set, he, this person, sir, is set to go to trial in January. That's 2020. The farm's owner, Frederick Alec Blair, told in investigators he met the group at a gas station somewhere and then invited them to use his land. He soon joined them in living on the property in tents and car. Blair pleaded guilty in May 2018 one count of being an accessory to a crime. He's scheduled to be sentenced October 31st and he faces up to 12 years in prison. Another group member, Ashford Archer, was convicted in March of two counts of fatal child abuse and one count of being an accessory to a crime. He was sentenced to 24 years in prison. The fifth member charged, Ica Eden of Jamaica, has been found mentally incompetent to stand trial. Friends, there's a backdrop to this account. Now, if you notice, there's country living involved. So we have to be careful as it relates to country living, right? Country living is involved. The backdrop story to all of this is, why am I sharing this? This came out yesterday, October 1st, 2019. Well, Nashika Bramble, if we take a look on the screen, the left of your screen, Nashika Bramble, I, I knew her personally. When we began the church there in Orlando in 2006, her mother was one of the first individuals who came to our church in 2006. Nashika, her daughter, would travel to Vera's Seventh-day Adventist church. The family is a Seventh-day Adventist family. That's why it's personal. The mother passed a few years, several years ago, probably five, six, seven years ago. I lost contact with Nashika sometime in 2007, 2008. The, the daughter you can see on the screen here, the 10-year-old 
I believe her name is Michaela, Michaela Roberts. Her mother, her grandmother said, who is Sister Bramble, the, old, the, the mother of Nashika, I want Pastor Henriquez to do Michaela's dedication. And I did that somewhere sometime in 2007. And from there, she just disappeared with her child. And then, of course, she had a second child. So between 2007 and 2017, 10 years, you can see what happened. A professed Seventh-day Adventist ran off, left the faith, I emphasize, left the faith, went off into this cult. And look at the end result. And that's why we're told in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, write down 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Verse number 6, verse number 11, the Bible tells us, But all these things happen unto them for ensamples, and they are written for our admonition, upon whom the ends of the world are come. Now surely, contextually, 1 Corinthians 10 is talking about biblical examples. The Israelites, as they were journeying from Egypt to Canaan, but friends, we have a modern day example right here. All these things have happened to Nashika Bramble. It has been written in the papers, October 1st, 2019. As an example, admonition upon us who are living in the last days. Is that clear? And verse number 12 of 1 Corinthians 10, Jesus says, Let him that thinketh he stands, take heed lest he falls. That's why this is personal. I'm still praying for Nashika Bramble. She's alive. I don't know if her probation has been closed. Life in prison without parole is that sentence. It's right there, friends. Mm, mm, mm. That's sad. Very sad. And that's why Christ said in Luke 22, verse 31, verse 32, just before the crucifixion, just before the options, Christ or Barabbas, application, Sabbath or Sunday, Sunday law, just before that time. What did Christ say to Peter in Luke 21? Simon, Simon, to get his attention, Satan desires to have you, that he might sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for thee, that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. What is Satan's plan, my friends? To have us and to sift us as wheat. Not only at the Sunday law, the, the last and final shaking and sifting out. But even before the Sunday law crisis. But what is Christ doing? He's praying for us. That what? Or a faith fail not. And what color in the Bible represents faith, Christian? Green. Green. Revelation 14, verse 12. Here are they that keep the commandments of God. And the faith of Jesus. Selected messages, book 3. Page 172. Faith in the ability of Christ to save us amply, fully, and entirely is the faith of Jesus? Come on, friends. What are your thoughts? Let's pray for her. And let me tell you something. She's not the only casualty in this game of life. What did I say? Nashika Bramble is not the only casualty in this game of life. Look at her beautiful daughters on the right of the screen. Think about the agony they went through in that car based on the report. Heated car. Think about no water, no food. They can't breathe. Based on the report, you talk about uh, demons possessing people. And many of us may say this could never happen to a Seventh-day Adventist. Or may I add, a former Seventh-day Adventist. One who used to believe in present truth. This could never happen. Is that so? Go ask King Saul. He's dead now. Read King Saul's account in the Bible. He put out the wizards. 
and the witches out the land when he was faithful. But what happened at the closing scene of King Saul's life? He went back to seek the witch of Endor. Come on, friends. All these things happened unto them, for examples. King Saul, and now today, Nashika Bremble. I can't stop looking at her children on the screen in front of me. Mm, mm, mm. Where did she go wrong? Where were her friends? The song in my mind, I need the prayers of those I love. Did anyone see her stream? Friends, if, I'm, if my wife is driving, I mean, for example, if my wife is driving, I'm in the front passenger seat. If I see her ac accidentally swerving off, the right path. I'm going to grab that steering wheel and try to correct it. Application. Who saw her swerving and said nothing? Am I my brother's keeper? Am I my sister's keeper? I need the prayers of those I love. Today is Nashika Bramble. Tomorrow it may be me if it's not for God. Tomorrow it may be you safe to serve in the chat room. You safe to serve and the rest of you in the forum. Tomorrow it may be you. Oh my God, help me. What's your prayer request, my friends? This is the game of life. I'm going to share with you a few statements here on the game of life. Look at this right here, my friends. And please bear with me. I'm going to read all these statements. They're pertinent. The and, and, and let's go back and look at the references. I'm simply going to read. First quote, Satan is playing the game of life for every soul. And he has every advantage for winning the game. Next quote, cares, riches, pleasures, all are used by Satan in playing the game of life for the human soul. So what is he using, friends? Cares, riches, pleasures. Ha, oh, friends, next, all are engaged in playing the game of life. Satan is well aware that if he can remove love and faith and supply their place with selfishness and unbelief, all the remaining precious traits will soon be skillfully removed by his deceitful hand and the game will be lost. Game over. What are those two words in this game of life? Game over. I remember way back, my friends, when my eyes were at my knees, a young little boy playing those video games, and now we should not be playing video games. Amen to that. Let me tell you something. When the game was over, it says game over, three exclamation signs. Come back here. Satan is, and let me tell you something. When in the literal game, I could just restart, reboot, and play again. But when game is over and your probation, mine is closed, there is no rebooting and getting a second chance. Revelation 22 verse 12, Christ will one day say, verse 11, Christ will one day say, He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. You are filthy, remain filthy still. You are holy. Remain holy still. You are righteous. Remain righteous still. Still the adverb of time. No change. Verse 12. And behold, I come quickly. And I went through previously the signs that show the mark of the beast is here. The second coming of Christ is here. In this game of life, we are about to hear game over. Hmm. And what words did Christ say on Calvary's cross? It is finished. That, that's Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John's account. But in, Re not, not, not but, in Revelation 16 verse 17, what will Christ say? It is done. Game over. Get back to the screen. Last quote on this slide. Satan is playing the game of life for the souls of men. Those who are doers of the words of Christ will find that they will have to watch and pray. Midday power surge. That's why we are here. Watch and pray continually in order that they may not be led into temptation. Next, while the youth, while the who, by the way, Nashika Bramble, 
I mean, Nashika Bramble, I believe she, she her age, she's, she's between the ages of 37 to about 40. 37 to about 40. Come back here, friends. While the youth are becoming expert in games that are of no real value to themselves or to others, Satan is playing the game of life for their souls, taking from them the talents that God has given them and placing in their stead his own evil attributes. Next, Satan presents many temptations to the youth. He is playing the game of life for their souls. And he leaves no means untried to allure and ruin them. But God does not leave them to fight unaided, praise God, against the tempter. They have an all-powerful helper. Who says amen to that, my friends? Let me see those amens, those thumbs up, those fireworks in the forum. Come back here. You, you read this recently, Christian? Mm -hmm. All right. Let's move on. He who tarries at the wine is playing the game of life with Satan. So how are many going to hear the words game over? You're lost. You have lost the game. Drinking liquor. Come back. Next statement. He is elected to use the means God has placed within his reach to war against every unholy lust. While Satan is playing the game of life for his soul. Again, Nashika Bramble is only being used as an example. I don't know if her probation is closed. I am praying for her. I will continue to pray for her. But there are many that we know, many of us know people who are in a similar predicament as is Nashika Bramble. If that's the case, send in those amens. If you can testify to that fact, send in those amens, my friends. All right, let me close right here. It says the enemy is playing the game of life for every soul. You could read that. Let me go somewhere else with this. Next paragraph. Think about Judas Iscariot as I read this statement. Satan is playing the game of life for every soul. He will bring in many things to prevent the expression of love and sympathy. It is thus that Satan ruined Judas Iscariot. Listen to this. Judas was constantly planning to benefit self. In this, he represents a large class of professed Christians of today. Therefore, we need to study his case. Study his case. We are as near to Christ as Judas was near to Christ. Yet if, as with Judas, association with Christ does not make us one with Christ, if it does not cultivate within our hearts a sincere sympathy for those for whom Christ gave his life, we are in the same danger as was Judas Iscariot of being outside of Christ while professing to be with Christ outside of Christ the sport of Satan's temptations and first Peter chapter 5 verse 7 verse 8 the Bible tells us be sober be vigilant why the adversary the devil as a roaring lion seeking those whom he may devour as I said that, I thought about Nashika Bramble. It's a possibility when her mother died because her mother, Sister Bramble, was the backbone of that family. She believed in present truth. Maybe, I don't know, when her mother died, she took it hard and went overboard. But again, where were the other SDA people who were, who were attending those churches Nashika was attending? I close. Satan can skillfully play the game of life with many souls, and he acts in a most underhanded, deceptive manner to spoil the faith of the people of God and to discourage them. So how will he cause many to be lost? 
through discouragement. Let me close. You could read the second paragraph. By the way, let me read that second paragraph. It's present truth. Satan is now more earnestly engaged in playing the game of life for souls than at any previous time. Do you see it, my friends? Last statement. The only satisfaction Satan takes in playing the game of life for the souls of men is the satisfaction he takes in hurting the heart of Christ. What are your responses based on the last sentence? While he's destroying us, he's laughing at Christ because he knows Christ loves Nashika Bramble. Christ loves and loved her daughters. He loved all those people connected with Nashika Bramble who are now about to face life sentences. Some have already been sentenced to life in prison. And Satan knows by hurting them, he can hurt the heart of Christ. Friends, I do not want to hurt Jesus. So in this game of life, I will watch, pray, and work. What do you say, my friends? You know what? I could go on and on, but I must close because I'm over time right now. Send in your prayer request as we hear this song. Take a listen. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we are thankful for this midday power surge. Father, we pray for Nashika Bramble, for her conversion, and for those uh, implemented in this serious crime and crisis. I pray for all others who are like Nashika Bramble and others in the same or similar predicament. May we watch, pray, and work. May we become converted and remain converted. Hear the prayer request from your people and save us, we pray. Bring us back tomorrow for midday power surge. Save us as we see the end right upon us in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Maranatha.